Pizza Express, give us a job. You know, you've seen the class kind of uh, the skills here. Yeah, you know. I'll swap over, you know, when he has tired days or Liverpool loses, you know. I can, I can Doesn't happen very often. I can, feel in, I can feel in the next day. Hi, I'm Mike and you're watching Behind the Bass. Today we are very excited to be joined by the one and only Maverick Sabre. With his new album, Don't Forget to Look Up, out now. The London-born Irish singer-songwriter is best known for his pushing boundaries in music and for his explosive live shows. But is he really good at making a pizza? We're going to find that out today and much more. Maverick Sabre, welcome to the kitchen. That was a lovely introduction, thanks very much. How are you feeling today? Are you ready to make some pizza? I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'll give you a little disclaimer. I'm not really great with food, okay. but as in making food, I'm you lovely not, at eating not, it. Not cook very much at home? I do, but, you know, I think, you know, I, you know I'm... 50-50. Okay, sometimes well, it's going it to be... Sometimes it can turn out beautiful, sometimes it can turn out, you know, horrendous, wow. bro. Time will tell. We'll okay, see. so we'll we're going to make a pizza wrap today. What we're going to do is get our fingers in the dough, yeah. and instead of uh, making it into a circle, we want to make it into a rectangle. This is quite relaxing. This it's nice, isn't it? I feel like someone should be playing some sound bowls in the background. I'm sure they'll put that in their post. How many sounds? Um, so yeah, new album's out. Don't forget it to look up. Yeah. Um, I recommend we go and listen to it. I really like it. I think it's. I think it's one of my. It's one of my favourites of the year so far. Thank you very um, much. And you've just come off the back of a tour. Um, how does it feel to be able to put this music out and then be able to perform it for people? For musicians, as much as people coming to listen to the music, coming to shows, we've all missed being our own people. Absolutely. You know? I think we've spent, you know, long enough, um, kind of, you know away from other human beings, away from other kind of like social environments. I think people Absolutely. just enjoy being back in a room standing uh -huh. beside strangers and singing and dancing yeah. and just back as a collective, you know. So how am I doing? Am I You're doing, doing really an alright job Let's here? Let's flip it over and do the exact I feel like I'm just thing. massaging the thing. So what else you got to do? you got to, you know, treat all it right. nicely. Okay, treat it nicely. Bring it out on a date. And That's bring it. To it. Pizza That's it. That is, yeah? Um, so you talk about your live shows, you said quite yeah. early on in your career that you had to sort of work quite hard to win an, an audience over. Mm -hmm. what, did, what does that mean and do you still sort of have to do that now? Yeah, yeah, do you know what, if, if we're specifically speaking about shows, I started off um, emceeing on the Irish hip hop scene when mm -hmm. I was younger. And you know, the, the crowds were normally, you know, 20 fellas in a room mm -hmm. and it was, you know, they were hardcore hip hop fans. Sure. So that, that was where I kind of like graced the stage for the mm -hmm. first time. And they were tough gigs in a sense of like, you know, I, th I feel like if you could if you could walk yourself around from getting a good a good reaction from a, mm -hmm. a hardcore audience when I was you know 15 20 fellas in a room, yeah. it was a good gauge for for kind of moving forward with Absolutely. shows. You know, it's clear that music's had quite a profound effect on you and, and your life. You said that um, you don't ask music to have an effect on you; it does or it doesn't. Do you remember sort of the particular song or, or musical moment that you had first when you when it re really resonated with you? Um, I think it's the one that always I always end up coming back to is Stand By Me by Benny King. Mm -hmm. I think I remember hearing that. My, my, my dad had a drifter's tape that I used to listen to on a little tape player mm -hmm. in the kitchen. And then I saw Stand By Me, the film, um, and then heard the song, I think it was through that, and just fell in love with that song. And it just, it always resonated with me. And what we're gonna do is lay our dough over the end like that, and what you want is about two centimeters this way, okay. and two centimeters that way. So this is where you might have to kind of contort it a little bit, be a little bit rough with it. You can be rough with it. Mm, yeah, all right. So I understand you picked up the guitar at about eight years old, yeah. you started you said, you're performing mm -hmm. at 15, obviously you've mm -hmm. been in the music industry now for over a decade. Yeah. How has your sort of creative process changed when you start to making music to sort of now? Has it gotten easier? I, f I feel like as I've kind of, sharpen the tools a bit, mm -hmm. you become more of a perfectionist. Sure. I definitely have. So mm -hmm. I found it now more of the discussion inside is when's the time to let things go? Sure. Whereas before, when I was a bit more naive about making music, I just let everything go mm -hmm. because I was just like, ah, it's done. Mm -hmm. The golden moment's been captured. Sure. I never, I'd never wanted to think too much about it. But, you know, as, as I've gotten older, the thinking too much is mm -hmm. part of the honing the craft. Absolutely. So it's just that balance of, you know, remembering that there is, is a golden moment to let things go. And, Source time now. Yeah. So we're gonna spread this out just sort of like in there, like that. So you can start spreading that out as you as you like. Right, I'm gonna source. go. Off. You start. Okay, spreading I'll out go here, first. I, don't, okay. I need to make sure you don't come out with something looking <laughs> perfect. Mine, mine needs to be you know ten out of ten here. So with your own sort of as you've developed, you've um, become more critical of yourself, maybe of your work. You've put more time and effort into it. Mm -hmm. You ever hit any sort of mental roadblocks, perhaps? And, and if you do, how do you get over them? I put, I turn it back to visuals. Actually, I put, I put um, films on in the background, mm -hmm. 
um, and that kind of guides me. So if I'm overthinking about a song, I'll find the part of the song that I like. So mm. say I've written a, uh, written a verse, and I, f I feel like, yeah, that's that's the really strong. That's the kind of the feel and the mm. emotion of it. If I'm struggling by the time I come to the pre-chorus or the chorus or the end of the tune, I'm like sonically, I don't know where where mm. it needs to go, and I'm overthinking. I'll find a bit of the song that feels right. Mm -hmm. I'll find a visual or a picture or something that matches the mood mm -hmm. and then I'll have put that on and repeat in the background. And so if, if that's what the, the verse that I, I'm connected to is connected to, by the end of the song, the, pit, the bit that's unwritten will kind of end up writing itself. Mm -hmm. I just follow that as an inspiration so it takes my mind off. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Thank you. Very nice coverage. All right, and what is this? It's a little bit chilli powder, so that is going to have a little bit of a kick to it. You've always believed in yourself, you've always said that you were good. Um, how important has sort of self-belief been for you as a person and a musician? Um, well, I think like, you know, it's as a, as a musician, it, it kind of, they all tie back into as a person as well. And mm -hmm. yeah, self-belief's the, the core. I think that's the thing that, for me anyway, has always needed to be the foundation of everything. Because mm -hmm. if I don't have that and I'm not my own, biggest fan or biggest supporter, then everything will crumble from there. Do you get mm. what I mean? You have to have that. Absolutely. Do you ever have those sort of moments of self-doubt as well? I think we all do. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And it's like, I always think that there's there's versions of us, you know. Okay. There's the person that drags yourself out of bed in the morning when you don't want to get up, mm -hmm. you know, and then there's a the person in bed being dragged out. And I think there are versions of ourselves mm. within ourselves. So I think sometimes it's about calling on the friend within you to to look after you, you know what I mean? That's a great line. I like that. Okay, so now is this? This is like a bloody therapy I session. I am enjoying yeah. this. So just a little sprinkle of this, a <laughs> couple of deep questions. It disarms you, doesn't it's it? It's nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so this is the tricky bit, if that wasn't tricky enough. Um, what we're going to do is put a little bit of water along yeah. here, and then we want to fold in these sides right. like that, right. and then fold this over, if all goes well, like that, and then you're going to push it quite firm against the the rim of this screen. Oh, so there's so there's a little bit of water, so, so I put I'm it just, just like around there. Mine looks like a sausage roll, there. That's all right. I'm a fan of sausage rolls. So. <laughs> all all right. right, and then you want to fold those bits in. Like that? Yeah, just like that, and then this. right over the top. <laughs> a little bit of black pepper on there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so one of the first acoustic performances on SBTV mm -hmm. was yours in 2009. Obviously, recently we lost Jamal mm -hmm. Edwards, um, and as as Things, when things like that happen, people look back and it's um, the impact that SBTV had on, on, on culture um, was enormous. How important is a platform like SBTV for, for music in this country? Um, I think all you need to do is look back at the era and the generation mm -hmm. of artists that came through that platform and that were supported by that platform. Mm -hmm. And I think not even just for the artists, but for, you know, for people who have gravitated towards their favorite artists through seeing them on a platform mm -hmm. like that. You know, there's not many platforms that have done that even globally to the extent, you know. It's like he captured not just a, a style of music or a genre, but like a whole era mm -hmm. of, you know, of everyone from Jesse J to Ed Sheeran to Stormzy mm -hmm. to DJ Huss to Dave to, you know, countless names. Um, that hasn't really been done like that in that essence. So I think you know, I think it's massively important that the the, the feeling and the kind of the purity and the spirit behind that needs to be needs to be torched on. You know, absolutely, one hundred percent. It's clear that you've got a good ear for for music and, and you're good at picking out artists because of your collaborations. I can tell. Mm -hmm. And one in particular, um, probably my favourite, is Georgia Smith. Mm -hmm. I understand you've been pretty involved with Georgia Smith throughout her career. I was played a demo of hers when she was, I think she must have been 15 mm -hmm. and she only had like, it's like two or three songs on it and just fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. um, and he was building a, a t wanted to build a team of, of good people around mm -hmm. her and good songwriters and, and musicians. And so she came down to London for the first time. I think she was like 15, 16. Mm -hmm. um, we walked together and then I brought her on the road and, and we've been kind of close and, and have worked you know, very closely ever since and mm -hmm. always massively, massively proud of us with yeah. my little sister. And it's like, you know, apart from my own career, that's the only other career that I've kind of seen since right at the, yeah. right at the start to where it's gone now. And it's beautiful to see. You know. You've right. talked a lot about in your career, sort of breaking down mental barriers. You're yeah. sort of quite open about yourself yeah. and your mental health and your music. Why is that important for you to sort of uh, showcase that in your music? Um, look, not everyone listens to music. Everyone listens to music for different reasons. Mm. Um, I think for me, 
why music is so powerful is because at points in my life when I felt deeply alone, um, it made me feel like there was someone else in the room speaking to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, and I think if you can do that with music, that's probably the most powerful thing you can you can you can make someone feel or mm -hmm. the warmth and security you can give someone. There's not there's not many of our friends or family that even have five four minutes directly in our ears all day. Mm -hmm. You know we are you know, allowing people to be in our ears for three and a half minutes, you better say something good to them. That's my kind of ethos. No, look, sometimes you want freeness and of dance course, and light, course, lightness, and not everything needs to be that. Uh -huh. um, needs to be heavy, and there's other ways of escaping and connecting that don't need to necessarily always reflect on that, but it comes from the same place and the same drive, you know? You get this in the oven? Yeah. Let's do it. All right, so you kind of want to just push it in. Like that, don't touch them because it's red. Oh, okay. yeah, just right. like that. Very yeah. nicely done. Excellent, excellent. And while we wait for those to cook, we're going to do a speed round, a quick fire round. You mentioned you like films. So All right, go on. All right, so I'm going to give you a quick, uh, quick fire round. Don't hit me, hit me with too hard of a question. What's the, what's the film that makes you laugh the most? What's the film that makes you laugh? Oh, The Goonies. The Goonies, yeah, yeah fantastic. Yeah, yeah. What's the film that makes you cry the most? Stand by me, because I, I probably choice. have shed a tear once. Good choice. Time. Maybe hungover, but... What's a film that inspires you to make music? The Beatles documentary. You're on the Disney Plus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. And, and Summer of Soul as well. What's your go-to comfort movie? Do you know what, actually? <laughs> I watched it the other day, and I hadn't seen it in years. About a Boy. Uh -huh. Remember About a Boy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's my comfort movie. Oh, my fantastic. mom loves that film. And finally, if you could be any in any TV or show or film, what TV show or film would you be in? Peaky Blinders, I'd say. I've got the hat on. Because I've got the hat oh, on. Yeah, fantastic. Um, and I think, you know, I think I'd fit into the mix somewhere along the line. And we just want to pop it, whoops, just on yeah. here. Just like that. Pop it on our plate. And then we can cut it in half. Yours looks good. I think yours might look better than mine. All right. And then we can uh, we can cheers and we can eat it. If you like. Cheers! That's, I'm gonna burn the mouth off myself with this. <laughs> we can give it a second if you like. Oh, we'll give it definitely give it a second, unless you've got a good insurance policy. Down here. <laughs> Go on. Cheers. Go on. Oh, good. That's not bad. Yeah, it's not too spicy, is it? So this is the the actual name for this dish is the sloppy vegan wrap. Sloppy vegan wrap. Second bite. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's been time away. I've been smoking down by the river, still miles away. Where the sun goes down in the winter. Where the sun goes down in the winter, and we all have something we're missing. Holding on to hope sometimes days on it. No one ever told me there'd be days like this. Lights on the corner, got no trust in these days. Drifting in the car, just need to fly away. Boy. Lord, I've been high as heaven, no. No light can leave a heavy load, but nothing's too late. I know that we'll find. It's been time away. I've been smoking down by the river, still miles away. Where the sun goes down in the winter. Where the sun goes down in the winter And we all have something we're missing Ain't seen no one else in a week So tired to hide when you're fed up And these four walls don't ever speak I'm down on the line, on the edge My brother, we need to speak I'm losing my head up Sweet mother, I need your peace It's something I've let go of I see that my enemies lost some time no wonder it's been taking me time to get home Still writing these lines to let go Still writing these lines to let go Oh, yes Oh, oh time away I've been smoking down by the river Still miles away Where the sun goes down in the winter Where the sun goes down in the winter And we all have some Time away. I've been smoking down by the river, still miles away. Where the sun goes down in the winter, where the sun goes down in the winter, and we all have song we're missing.